What's up guys, Ali Reza here, good to see you again. So in this tutorial, we are going to render a Batmobile with a cyberpunk style lighting and we are going to keep the process as simple as possible so we can achieve an interesting result in an extremely short period of time. This video is targeted towards beginners and I hope it helps you learn the workflow of making a simple still image in UE5. Now let's jump right in and get started. Here I open the blank project and of course the first step is to import our Batmobile into UE5. Go to sketchfab.com and from the explore section hit cars and vehicles. Check the downloadable option so you can find free models and now as you can see here you have access to a lot of high quality models which you can use in your projects. Here in the search bar I'm gonna type Batmobile to find the model I've worked with. Here it is, select it and open it up and as we can see it's a very high quality model with its own materials and textures. So it will definitely look good in our final render. Let's download the FBX format and import it into UE5. After you download and extract the file, you will have two folders in which you have the FBX file and also the textures used for the model. Drag the file into your content browser and then drag the model into your scene. You can also import the textures and use them for making the Batmobile's materials but here I want to use Quicksell materials, so I'm not gonna use them in my project. I want the Batmobile to look dirty with dust and scratches so it gives the feeling that it has come out of a battle. To do so I'm gonna use this stain material here in the Quicksell bridge. You can search for stains and find different materials and choose the one you like most for your project. Just drag it on the model and then open it up. Here in the details tab, play with the scaling parameters to achieve the best possible result for the model. Let's go with 15 by 15 and also assign it to the wheels too. Alright, now what we're gonna do is to create the environment around our hero asset. I gather some renders to get some ideas and in these pictures you see that we have a road and some buildings around it and the car is placed in the middle of the frame. Let's block out the scene based on this idea and after that we will add materials and more 3D assets to fill the scene up. Just drag a cube into the scene and by duplicating and scaling it create the environments around the Batmobile. We need a road, some buildings and also two sidewalks, which can all be made with a simple cube. Alright, the next step is to place our camera so we can see what will be visible in our final shot. This approach helps us invest our time and effort more efficiently. We do not want to waste our time on things that won't be visible in the final render. Let's drag a cine camera into the scene and frame our shot. I'm gonna choose a 50mm lens and also hit the eyedropper in the focus settings and select the Batmobile to make the camera focus on the model. Also, let's rotate the model to have a better view. You can try different angles and choose the one you like based on your camera angle. Okay, now that we have fixed our composition, we can start assigning materials to our objects and some 3D assets to fill the scene with. The buildings in the background will be barely visible so we don't need to worry about them very much and assigning a simple material to them will suffice. On the contrary, one of the most important assets in the scene is the road and as you can see it's filling one third of the image. So we should pay extra attention to it and make it look as good as possible. Let's start by finding an asphalt material in Quicksell Bridge. I chose this street asphalt so we can have these yellow lines and have more detail on the road. Add it to your content browser and assign it to the plane. Open it up and fix its scale to make it perfectly fit the plane. Now in order to make it look more interesting I'm gonna add some decals to it. Download some decals from the Quicksell bridge and place them on top of the road. Don't worry if they look repetitive, when we go to the camera view, they don't look bad at all. 
Keep in mind that you can use decals on the car too. For example, if you want to make it look more dirty, you can just find the proper decal and place it on the car. Okay, now we can start adding 3D models to bring life to the scene. First, we need some building walls to fill up the background and then we will place some objects on the road and the sidewalks. Here I have downloaded these 3D assets including a sidewalk, walls and windows, some pallets and some cones. You don't need to create a clean scene because we are going to export a single shot and we only care about what is visible in the camera view. So just fill up the scene with the assets and when we start polishing the final shot we will worry about how they look. Okay, now go to the particle folder in the starter content and drag the steam particle into the scene. Scale it up and duplicate it so that it completely covers the background. Now let's go to the camera view and see what we have got so far. It's already looking great and it's a decent render with daylight scenario. By holding Ctrl and L and moving your mouse you can change the direction of your sunlight and create different lightings. Okay, now let's make it more dramatic with a different lighting scenario. First, select the post-process volume and check the infinite option so it covers your whole scene and then in the exposure tab, put mean brightness and max brightness on trees so it doesn't change the exposure automatically. Then I'm gonna select the directional light and decrease the intensity to make a night mood. Let's change its color to something bluish to make it look like moonlight. Now add a spotlight to the scene to light the car from the side. Increase the outer and inner cone angle to make it cover more areas and then bump up the intensity. Duplicate it and put it on the other side of the car and adjust it properly. Now I'm gonna change the color. Make the right one blue and make the left one purple. Here you just need to play with the intensity, their angle and their color to achieve the result you are looking for. Here I want to have more light on the ground but I don't want to change my spotlights so I'm gonna add two point lights and adjust them so they cast more light on the ground. Also make their color identical to the spotlight colors. Yeah, it's looking pretty good and to make it even better you can play with the assets in the scene and by changing their placements, their rotation and their scale you can try different compositions and achieve the result you like most for your scene. For example, here I added these palettes to the foreground so they frame the image and give it more depth. Another thing we can do to improve the image is to make the asphalt look wet so open the material and decrease the roughness. Tweak these parameters to achieve your desirable result. As you can see it makes the road pop up and makes it look more interesting than a bland and dry material. Okay now I'm finished with setting up the scene and the last part of the job is to add some post production effects. We are gonna start from the top and add everything which makes our render look better. First let's add some bloom. Here something around 3 looks fine. You can enable and disable the effect to see the before and after and decide if you want to keep it or not. Here I'm gonna add a little chromatic aberration. Something about 0.6 looks good. Be careful not to overdo it otherwise it messes up all the work you have done by now. Next I'm gonna add a dirt mask which makes our camera lens look dirty with some dust and scratches. Just google dirt mask and download one. I downloaded this one but I found out that it's too big for the lens and it won't look natural so I opened Photoshop and duplicated three times to make an image with smaller artifacts. Just drop the image on the content browser and assign it to the dirt mask texture. Play with the intensity and tint to achieve the result you like. Next I'm gonna add some vignette to the image, something around 0.6 or 0.7 looks good in this case. Now here we have color grading which can make a huge impact on your image. Here I'm gonna increase the saturation to make the colors pop up. 
There are a lot of settings here which you can play with to achieve amazing results but here I'm happy with the colors so I'm not gonna touch them anymore. Here you can also play with the contrast and adjust it if it's needed. The last thing I'm gonna add is film grain. A little bit of noise makes your picture look more realistic but again keep in mind that you should use them carefully otherwise it won't look good at all and it can break the image easily. Yeah and that's it, this is all I'm gonna do for the post process effects and I'm happy with the result so let's take a high res screenshot and finish the job. I hope this was useful for you and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, see you next time.